Welcome back guys, and uh, after the trauma that there was this uh, black green deck, which I've now renamed permanently to uh, Green Warden equals 6, we're going to be switching up. We're going to be going to a Is It Burn deck, surprise, <laughs> I'm sure no one saw that coming, but uh, but it's another name I'm pretty proud of, Barrels to the Walls. <laughs> I'm really proud of that, I'm sorry, I needed to get that out there, but uh, to be honest, this is going to be more of a test video than an, like, an actual refined deck, because... Uh, is it burn as a deck which I thought would be very very powerful come Kaladesh because of one addition being shock which uh, this card is so so huge in these sort of decks because before we ran like Galvanic Bombardment or maybe Fiery Impulse as our one mana removal spell and it just it can't go to the face it can't hit Planeswalkers this thing is reach as well as more burn to the deck and it's also cheat removal for creatures which just takes every single box this deck's needed uh, so I thought this deck would be huge, but to be honest, it's been a ghost. I don't I haven't heard anyone talking about it, I haven't heard anyone playing it. So uh I basically just threw it together again and then I threw in I think the only new cards are Shock and Brawl, which we'll get onto in a minute. Cause uh and then I think like I said, I think the deck is very similar to what it was before. To be honest, I couldn't even tell you what I could <laughs> to throw them in the deck, but uh one thing I will say is that I don't think this deck is the right way to play as a burn anymore. It might not be the most optimal way because if this, this as you can see, is a very all-in deck. So, uh, <laughs> uh, like, I mean, I, I say all-in, we curve out in like six. And we've got two eight mana spells, but they're not really eight mana spells. But I mean, like, you know, there's no like card draw really. Like, there's nothing like no glimmer of geniuses. There's no, uh, you know what I mean? It 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 is just kind of throw exactly twenty damage, have zero cards left in hand when you throw twenty damage at them, sort of thing. But with Barol in the deck, I'm wondering if it's worth it to go like more controlly or not. So, like stuff with like Glimmer of Genius, etc, etc, and just kind of burn them out over a long game while controlling the board. But uh, for the time being, I think I'm just going to stick to this burn deck. We'll put it out through a couple of matches and we will see if it is actually as good as I thought it would be. And then uh, we can come to that decision later on. But uh, of the deck itself, I'm not particularly going to go over it because, like I said, the only new cards are Shock. And brawl, so everything apart from that is as similar as it was before. It's just a bunch of burn spells, <laughs> a bunch of uh, fevered visions, more burn, uh, Chandra again, more burn. The planeswalkers and trenchal gear hulk and bedlam reveler as our finishers as the late game to keep our hands stocked and to keep the uh, the pressure on. And then the card draw we run two cathartic reunions, discards well with fiery temple, which is nice. Or you can discard some take inventories, which again draw you a bunch of cards in the late game. But, uh, the, and the power creatures, of course, being the four Thermal Alchemists and the three Storm Chaser Mages, which generally are how you force through enough damage. If you play one of these on turn two and they can't kill it, that will generally be your opponent's doom. But, uh, that's enough talking. Let's get on to the video. And, uh, yeah, so we'll try and put yesterday behind us. <laughs> but the thing I think, why I think this more control -y build might be better is because Barol himself... He doesn't get rid of the coloured costs and spells. So stuff like Firecraft, even with the cost reduction, is still going to cost red red. So it makes it hard to chain like two spells in a turn altogether still. Because, uh, I mean, you still need, like, if you want to cast two uh, burn spells, you, need, you still need four red available, which is quite a significant amount. And, uh, this could be the end of our streak. Okay. <laughs> this is like the worst hand ever, but I've got to keep. It's better than going down to five. And we just have to hope Barol draws in, draws well into us here. Or they have a removal spell for the first one. <laughs> so it's uh, more valuable, of course. But I mean, uh, I mean, this isn't a good hand, obviously. But then them two other hands were even worse somehow. So we'll just move on from that. Spike out the turn. Okay. So right now, what I want to see, I want to see like a, a chain of take inventories. A cathartic reunion wouldn't be too bad. Uh, there's a lot of good spells we could draw. The thing with Boral himself is he doesn't actually pile the pressure on. He's only uh, he's only a one three. He's not like a you know thermal alchemist which can do like four damage in a turn. But uh, we will uh, the talent time in main phase, which is a mistake. Uh, they already made the land drops. So I can't think of a single thing unless they want to play uh, Bonso, of course. They're digging for it because they need it. There's actually uh, Esper improvise here. Is it Esper? Yes, it is Esper. But our opponent did have an avatar, and they uh, appear to be playing a controlly deck, so... I assume this is a person who, like me, is taking their time to get up the ladder, so... We could be in for a match. 
Uh, I'll get double blue out, and then we'll have triple red for next turn. Nothing we can do here, so we pass. And they might think we have a counter spell, it's nice. That's what, another reason to get the double blue out. I'll pause them as well in the first spell they play, just to mind games. I'm going to need it against Espo when I'm mulligan to 6, and I'm not exactly drawn well, but it was essentially a mulligan to 5 with the second brawl in hand. So, uh, unfortunately, and mulliganing against control when they just generally just want to hit land drops, as this opponent is doing here, then, uh, I don't know. Lightning Axe isn't too great right now for playing control. <laughs> but I guess this does show, the, show why Shock is such, such a better card against, like, Galvanic Bombardment and stuff. If this is a control deck, Shock's going to hit Jace and about that. I mean, Galvanic Bombardment would hit Jace and that's about it, but, uh... At least Shock, if he does, like, stop playing, like, Read the Bones or something, gets himself low, maybe we can finish him off with Shocks. But uh, we've essentially done nothing until turn four, as as has he. <laughs> so uh, this Burrell is after gonna, gonna have to go deep here for us to stand a chance. Uh, unfortunately, he does not make Planeswalkers cheaper. Uh, and the worst thing here is if he has a turn six Trenchal Gear Hulk, we'll have to triple down with a Lightning Axe discard and plus a Shock to kill it, and he gets to flashback the Talent Time. Uh, well, well, at least the second Burrell does something now, <laughs> and. Uh, He's definitely playing counter spells, so we're not just going to run out of Shandor on turn 6 until he taps out. Because <sighs> one way we can win this game is if he taps out and we can cast a Shandor and just he can't deal with it. So we're just going to calmly and assuredly hit all land drops, play second Baral. He's going to let it resolve because he's not going to counter a 2 drop when uh, it's turn 18 and Baral really doesn't do too much by himself. He's going to counter a 2 drop. <laughs> Uh, I'm fine with that, I guess. It's not the worst thing in the world, to be fair. If it had just been like a scatter the winds or something, maybe not. But because he gets the clues, it's probably good. It's probably worth it. I, I can I can get behind that decision from our Esper control opponent over here. So ideally, he gets greedy, taps out for like I don't know what could he tap out for. Uh, two sphinxes, two lidges or something, or I don't know, Dynavolt Tower. That would probably be another good one. But he's, I mean, the smart thing for him to do, obviously, is to just wait here. He's got a bunch of card draw. He's essentially got three cards just sitting out on the table if I do nothing, which is a very good chance I'm going to do nothing. Because, again, I'm not going to run out of Chandra, even if that allows him to crack three clues. Because Chandra is essentially our <laughs> one of our very few outs at this point in the game. So We will just have to be patient. Hopefully we draw a threat. We do not. Although, Manland isn't the worst thing in the world, uh, especially this late on in the game. So yeah, he's going to sacrifice two clues here, maybe even cast a glimmer, town time. Well, yeah, so. The advantage is, is that, <laughs> there's no advantage, who am I kidding? Uh, Fever Divisions is in our deck, that would be a, that would be a nice card to draw. That's very good against control. Uh, the advantage is if we can get him low enough, maybe we can like finish him off with two uncounterable firecrafts. Uh, but it's just it's it's gonna come. This game's gonna come down to how fast he can kill us because we are uh, stuck in the mud right now. We're really not doing anything. I'm not, I'm not gonna fire a shock on his face. Uh, exquisite firecraft. We have no instance, so he would just count. Well, would he just count that? Mm. I think we attack with the manland more than anything else. Probably blessed alliance as us. That would be a worst case scenario, but. Torrential Gear Hulk. Less alliance, yep. Well, that's very, very good against a burn deck. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was this was just a, a poor draw, allowing the control deck to uh, take control. So, this is what we're going to be called. Be in for a while. So, uh, get ready. That's all I'm going to say. Strap in, or maybe skip ahead to minute 45 when this match ends. As, as, as control goes. I mean, we, we shock here. We shock, then we lightning axe, then exquisite firecraft's got. Uh, I mean, if he taps out, it's just it's gonna be a case of whether he gets greedy and taps out, and can't deal with Chandra. <laughs> there's a, there's a very specific window where we can win this game, and that is a good start. If he gets greedy, if he gets, I mean, <sighs> hang on, we need to pause and step yet. So if we shock this thing and he counters, we can kill it with Lily and then we'll be really, really far ahead. 
But if he doesn't counter, then he's just going to counter the Chandra and we just shocked for nothing, essentially. Although, I guess then we just Firecraft. But then we'd be wasting two spells when we only need to use one, although he would just counter this one. So yeah, I think logically it makes sense to counter Shock. Because uh, this doesn't have Spell Mastery yet, even with Shock in the graveyard. So I think what we do is we... we Shock. He decides whether he wants to counter or not. He's probably not going to counter. He counters. <laughs> He's going to redirect it to our face, but that was the worst decision he's made this game by far. That is that is what we call fancy play rather than actually a good play. Uh, he had no reason to make that, but uh, now we just get to max punish him as unfortunately we draw the second chance. So I guess if he doesn't answer this one, then... Uh, but like this just sums up why you would never ever counter that spell there. Like really. There was... Now he has to deal with the resolved planeswalker. He needs essentially his anguish and makings, which admittedly he has a good chance of having considering how many cards he's drawn. But I, that was a completely unnecessary play. Like, if if he doesn't counter that, what? I kill his Liliana and I'm I'm left with like two cards in hand. If I like, because I need a second burn spell. So there's there's absolutely no reason for him to counter that, even if he has the anguish and making. All the imprisoned in the moon, I guess. And if he doesn't have either on them, that's just the worst play I've ever seen. Uh, Sauron, that's pretty good. Uh, although, no, no, it's actually still not even that. Unless he has a counter spell in hand, because then we can just Chandra plus to kill off his, his Sauron. So we'll just be throwing a bunch of Planeswalkers at each other. Oh. Pass the turn, pass the turn. He can crack the clue. Okay, yeah. I do not agree, with, agree at, at all with how my opponent has played this game. Uh, we even get to take inventory here, which is nice. But yeah, I don't agree whatsoever. We can't cast a spell, unfortunately, but I think the only spell we'd be digging for would be something to deal with Sauron. Uh, like, we're still f we're still far behind here, but... Oh, it would be the Fever Divisions. Yeah. We're still far behind here, but we actually have a chance now if he can't deal with this. That's... I mean, yeah, there was just... Look, look at the situation. He doesn't counter there, he just plays a Sauron next turn and we just can't win. Now we have a chance to pen on his hand. So yeah. I do not agree with my opponent how they've played this game out. Because if they're playing a Sauron out and draining for 5 then they clearly don't have too many answers as that shows there. If they're playing a Noxious Gearhulk on the empty board I can just Lightning Axe that with whatever I draw. Keep plusing, keep plusing there. Yep. Or do I discard Firecraft? Uh, no, I think Firecraft's got a chance to be more useful. Well, they could just counter spell. Well, then I guess we just Firecraft it, so yeah. So if he has a counter spell here, then we just Firecraft it, and then we'll be left with the Planeswalker. I mean, we're relying on Sh uh, Chandra's to win us the game at this point. So yeah. You're dead. Now we can plus. I guess we should have plused first in case we drew another burn spell that could kill it. Uh, we didn't. We drew a land, so it didn't matter either way. So, two turns off of winning with this Chandra, unless you can find an answer. And then, uh, yeah, so not <laughs> really not much to say. And, uh, I mean, Trench of Gearhulk, is maybe that's why he's passing the turn, so I've got to keep that in mind. Unfortunately, we draw a land. It's not like our player changes here. Uh, Whatever we draw, we cast. Yep. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, is that is that wrong to do that play? Am I just meant to not cast it? I don't know. I've. He, I don't know. I really don't know if that's the wrong play for me. I assume it is because I'm going to lose the game because of it, but I mean, I guess I guess it is. I guess it is the wrong play. Oh, well, unfortunately, I learned the hard way that uh, Scatter of the Winds is actually a pretty good card when in the right situation. Uh, that w I mean, if we don't counter that and he has no answer, which I'm assuming he doesn't have, then we just win the game. Although we're not over it yet, to be fair. Uh, if we keep flooding out like we are, this is ridiculous now. Uh, I think that's pretty good to be fair. We don't answer. Uh, I think the, the 
If we just discard Kasagoon, what are the chances of us getting enough cards in hand again? It's better than, no, I mean, land is absolutely useless at this point. Kasagoon, maybe. Yeah. So, I mean, Chandra's going all the way down here, but she's not out of it yet. Like, this, we could just draw another burn spell off Chandra next turn, and then we're in the same situation where he needs to find an answer. Although, he'll have a lot of turns to do it, although we'll be drawing an extra card a turn. I don't know. I'd, let me know in the comments, actually, whether that was wrong to cast the spell. Did, like, anyone there see this Scattered of the Winds coming? Because, as I'm sure you were, I didn't even come across my mind. I just, don't, I just kind of assumed that as a three-mana counter spell. <laughs> I very rarely see it awaken. Uh, this is a, this is a weird game. This started off like a guaranteed loss, then my opponent misplayed, and then maybe I misplayed back. I don't know. This is it's been a stressful couple of videos. Bedlam Reveler is a very very good card. I think I'm gonna. Do we just Bedlam Reveler then plus? I think we Bedlam Reveler first because we've got so little cards in hand. Is this one cast when it enters the battlefield? Enters the battlefield, and it resolves. So he doesn't have any more counter spells left. Uh, Trenchful Gear looks really nice here. Let's get rid of this land. Okay, so. He. Maybe I should have even resolved the Trenchful Gear Hook while he was tapped out. I could even resolve it now, and then he needs an answer. What would I get back? Uh, the only target is <laughs> Fiery Temper. Or do we just wait till end step? Uh, I think we do it now. Uh, he's got one card in hand, so unless it's a removal spell now, he's going to be able to keep removal open. So it only punishes for sorcery speed removal, but them decks don't really run sorcery speed removal anymore. So I think we just throw it out there now. He doesn't have the counter spell, otherwise, he would counter that, surely. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's right to uh, wait till end, st um, wait till end step. I'm really not very good in control matches. But he's down to one card in hand, and we I think it's a blank. That's my prediction. So it's going to be whatever comes off the top of his deck here. Uh, I mean, granted, his, to his, his top end is better than mine, so... But then again, last video, my top end was better than my opponent's. That's a pretty good top <laughs> top deck by my opponent. And it's a really good reason to wait till end step. Uh, I don't think... Is that a misplay? I don't even know anymore. Why are these last two videos being like this? Why can't I just have simple games where I either win or lose? Instead, it's my fault or it's the opponent's fault. This is just torture. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can win now. I, realistically, I don't think there's a single card that we can draw. Yep, that's not it. So if we wait till end step, I think we win the game there. But again, if he draws a counter spell, we look like an idiot. You know what I mean? Granted, how many counter spells does he use? I mean, yeah, like... It was a case of board wipe versus counter spell, and I think it's more likely he runs a board wipe, because like if his if his sweepers were like languish, it does nothing there. The henny's expertise does nothing there, so I think he was more likely to draw into a counter spell than he was to draw into a. He was more likely to draw into a counter spell than he was to draw into a a board wipe. So I actually I don't think that one's as bad, although it does feel terrible. I don't think that one's wrong. Maybe maybe earlier on, which the. Uh, you know, the whole Chandra thing was wrong, but I don't think that one's wrong. Uh, let me know in the comments if it is wrong. <laughs> uh, this has been a stressful video. I'm, I'm generally just looking forward to reading the comments on this because I have no idea what I've done is right, what I've done is wrong. Uh, obviously, it's easy for you guys because you'll see how this ends. But uh, at the time, remember, I am live. I am here in the moment, in the, in the now. I have no idea how this is going to end. Uh, Luckily they seem to be blanking a bit. Maybe we can burn them out if we draw the perfect combination of spells. That is... Uh, we wheel our hand because I don't think Shock's doing too much for it. That's actually a really good draw. <laughs> we get to do everything here. I don't think Shock is what we want. Uh, so kill you and then we get to burn you. Tap. Actually we can just is it draw, discard the hand and then draw that many cards. Yeah. It's not like Chandra, so we can't empty our hand first. So, I mean, I think Shock is... I mean, I think a random card is going to be better than Shock at this point. Enough that I think it's worth speculating on. That's the lines. That does nothing except gain you life. Uh, I don't agree with that, because... I don't agree with that again. It's not like you low on mana at this point. Uh, that's just essentially gain for life. I, I would have just waited and tried and get more value about that. It's not like it's not exactly like you're on death's door. And I was right. 
so see, see exactly now my opponent gets punished this is just the worst game we're just punishing each other over and over again <laughs> unless he has a second one here of course the third one actually yep there's the third blessed alliance against it is aggro deck do 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 okay that's my uh, mario sad music as i do that sarcastically when i'm upset uh, <laughs> i mean we're both playing off the top of our decks you know <laughs> Granted, we have seen, I think, every single good card in our top end except for more bed one Bedlam Reveler, and he's playing off the top. But we've got the threat, you know, we get to ping him here. Okay, yes. 20 turn clock, my friend, find your answer. <laughs> uh, this is this is a bizarre game. Uh, one of a few more, the second one is actually pretty good, as far as lands go, of course. As far as lands go, it's pretty terrible, but as far as an actual spell, it's not bad. Uh, it's almost like Man Land were invented that way. Uh, okay, stay calm. He needs to blank like ten more turns in a row, but then we then we stand a chance. He's already used three of his blasted lines. If he kills a one of them, what matters? You know, there's so many good things we could draw, and there's so many bad things we could draw. Hey, look at you, just on time. Uh, so, okay, crack him for potentially four here gonna do the flip now we have to zoom in because apparently right click was a gift it wasn't a requirement for the game uh, oh well that's just bizarre it saves you three damage this turn but that's it uh, I would maybe have waited for a more opportune moment maybe uh, but now we just no that was just terrible <laughs> yeah, never mind I forgot how priority works <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, that worked out pretty well. We just made our opponent discard a card. Oh, holding lands for another cathartic rune, although I think we've seen both now, haven't we? Uh, one. No, there's still a second one in hand, so we'll keep them. Oath of Lilian is pretty good. Uh, I think one or a few more was more important than this uh, Thermal Alchemist at this point. And we know he top deck that, so. Begrudgingly, we'll let our thingy die here. Uh, four damage. I mean, this is going to do more damage over two turns than one. Uh, I, th I think this is right. And we think his last. I think his last card in hand is land because I think you top deck that oath of thingy. So uh, playing off the top of our deck, we are getting close to burnout range. And he just used all his blessings alliances, so there's going to be no more life gain. I don't think. Even look, all three blessed alliances and Soren. <laughs> uh, this has been a hell of a game, to say the least. And it's it's been a game where we've just punished each other over and over again. It's been awful, I think, from both sides. But uh, I'm going to count my lands in a minute. I'm going to be very salty either way, just letting you know. Not going to play it out even out of frustration because, like I said, Cathar Green would be, then be a very good draw. Uh, game, game. Don't don't do this to me now. Okay. I guess after attack first, don't I? Uh, there we go. So, 10 life. We do run a fair bit of burn on the deck, although we have been through more than half our deck at this point. Uh, I mean, what would just another planeswalk at this point? I think just ends the game. Uh, we've seen his torrential gear hook, haven't we? No, we haven't seen his yet. We've seen mine, and I think we just I think he just drew a land because the priority is passing. So, that's a good draw. <laughs> He gets down to six here, so maybe if we shocked instead of a uh, collector of defiance in all them turns ago, maybe that would have been right. Although I can't remember what I drew off that now, so uh, but I'm going to keep the firecraft in hand because it's uncounterable. So we'd rather um, uh, maybe not be scared of countering spells, and uh, I'm not really worried about like discard or anything. So we are two points of damage off. Although fever visions, I think I'd cast it still, but it's not going to get the damage through. Uh, I mean, if he pluses twice here, so that's a good reason to keep Firecraft in hand. And uh, Obnixilus actually uses dead on board, unless he finds a good thing off this spell here. Uh, but I mean, he's used quite a lot of his Oka, never mind, I forgot the, the uh, zombie. Oh, uh, okay, never mind. So we see if this resolves. Confirm suspicions. 
Now we we can't even we can't even attack without trading off our lands. Well, this Obnixilus is essentially dead if he pluses. So the question is, do we attack? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. We can kill that thing and get in for four damage, and then that would strand his Obnixilus. But that would cost us him plus and a misplay and losing the game. No, we just we just pass. It's our play. We have to we have to pass and hope he hope we draw no more burn or hope he pluses up next list and doesn't have any more life gain, which I don't think he will. I don't think it's physically possible for Esper to have any more life gain in their main deck without being counter decked here. And if he pluses up next list, then we firecraft him out and he cannot do anything about it. But he doesn't really need to plus up next list at this point. We're stuck in a lock. What burn have I got left to draw? I've got one fiery temper, uh, second collector defiance. There's fiery temper, two fiery tempers. Uh, how many shocks have we used? One, two fiery tempers, two shocks, one collector defiance. So we do have burn left in our deck. Bedlam revel is also a good draw, I guess. Although we'd have to firecraft first. Uh, hopefully, he just makes this easy for us and pluses his obnixilus. I'm not sure if it's right from his end, because that would end the game the fastest, I think, but... He's pushing game over, unless he has life gain. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who I am anymore. What's my name? This is, why can't I just have quick games of magic? Okay, are we doing anything here? No. But I'm just going to launch this firecraft at his face, and if he somehow has a w if he... <gasps> he could torrential gear hulk into Blessed Alliance. And he's gonna trench you know he's gonna trench your gear hook into Blessed Alliance. We just accepted that. So I think the play here is to take inventory. Hope to draw into a burn spell. Fight an instant speed burn spell. And then we can fire that off at him. Hopefully he then Blessed Alliance is in response. But I think it's right to go like this. Go like this. Well, we drew the instant speed burn spell. So, I mean, this is this could be for nothing, but I think it is worth. And he's got loads of cards in hand now, so the fever vision might be bad, not be bad, but so he doesn't do it there. Okay, he didn't draw it, thank god. Uh, might have been a bit too safe at the end there, but I think that's worth baiting out for. And uh, yeah, so that's a textbook example of how to beat control. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't know if I played that right or not. I know there was a lot of decision making, and uh, generally that leads to misplays, but... Because the last match was only one video, I will play one more and hope to god we don't get a control mirror. <laughs> I mean a control match again. We do okay there. Uh, he misplayed a lot, I will say that 100%. Like, not even being mean to my opponent, but countering the shock and the Liliana instead of just waiting until see if I had a second burn spell. Uh, allowing me to resolve like two planeswalkers in a row, getting rid of your Sorin and like, you know, and your Liliana. There was just, there was, there was a lot of things there where I think I couldn't have lost that game if he'd played like a 100% robot. But, I mean, we didn't play perfectly as well, so maybe he didn't stand a chance if we played right. And uh, we are now playing Dieter Manson for our rank 13. Let's see how this one goes. Uh, two lander, but we do have Thermal Alchemist plus Taken, which I think this is a keep. Uh, it's not a great keep, but it is a keep. Uh, it's not, actually, it's not the worst keep. Just want to draw a couple lands off the top, and if this Thermal Alchemist sticks, this game should end fairly fast. Well, asking ye shall receive, that is... The perfect land off the top comes into play untapped, gives us both our colours, and there's a. Uh, yeah, not much else to say. So, I'm thinking right now we go. Thermal. That, that blocks pretty well as well. It looks like we're playing soft as I assume, judging by the uh, red, 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 blue, <laughs> and the, uh, the artifact across from us. Uh, you're a bit, low, a bit late, a bit early, whichever one it is. I'm thinking next turn we can either Lightning Axe Fiery Temper or we can. Uh, Lightning Axe, Discard and Take Inventory, depending on the threat level our opponent plays. 
and that would give us a couple of cards. Due to the foundry, that thing is going to die, so I'm probably going to eat the lightning axe, and uh, we'll take this damage now. Our removal is not too great in this matchup, it's targeted removal versus P and Kieran's and uh, Willowrokes, but that is one good target for a lightning axe. So I think we just go Wraith, full on Wraith, oh, ho, ho, ho. that's tempting, that is really tempting, because we could go uh, Cathartic Greening, discard and Fiery Temper, pointed at that thing, draw like a bunch of cards, in fact that might even just be worth it. I think it is worth it, um, yeah, I'm going to stand by that. I mean, it costs us potential 3 damage, but I think it is better than just... Because you have to kill this thing this turn, so yeah, I think I like that play. Make sure this taps right. Discard you and you. Yeah, always discard the take inventory if you get the chance, and also always, also always remember your triggers. It's also a good one. Because that burn is basically counter 20, so you don't want to miss your, uh, your uh, triggers here. Or we could just ignore that thing for this turn, it's really not doing anything right now. Then we could fire temple air. Yeah, I'm up for ignoring it. Uh, we can kill it and then we can just kill it like the turn later. Depends what we draw off this cathartic reunion, of course. Yeah. I think we stand a pr with the hand we've got, we've stand a very good chance of being able to race here. And that has just uh, backed me up. Because he's on 14 life, essentially. And then uh, he's going to be on a lot less next turn if this thermal alchemist sticks around. So. I think we're doing okay, you know, I don't think we're doing too badly. Second Chief of the Foundry, well, it's not great, but we get to kill one of them. We are taking a lot of damage of the seven, actually, to be precise. <laughs> but we get to go, I think we get to go Lightning Axe, Fiery Temper, again. Well, not again, but I guess for the first time. And then be conservative, kill one, and then I still think I'm going to the face here, to be brutally honest. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, I mean I'm happy going for the face here. I think I don't think I'm worried about too much burn, especially with the second lightning axe. So uh, I'm gonna do this main phase just in case it runs counter spells. Kill you, discard you, play you. So then this trigger comes in. You come into play tapped. Then uh, we'll cast you. Putting you at the face, I think, still. Now we will tap you again. We are running low on red sources, actually, but I don't think he can kill us this turn. And then uh, I think we stand a very good chance of killing him next turn. Actually, do we? I don't know. Maybe it was right to have killed that second creature there. But we can, unless he has a third chief of the foundry, we can block the chief here. And then we take him down to eight, and then. I don't know. Then we can Bedlam Reveler as well, because I think we've got quite. Yeah, five instants in there, so Bedlam Revel only costs three right now. Although it would take up all our red. So yeah, I'm going to block you. Uh, see what he does. Alright, impulse. Fair enough. Uh, not too happy about that, obviously, but I think we can... Depends if he has a Whirl Rug or not. Well, Thop to Spino is pretty terrible as well, actually. Uh, there's probably an argument somewhere down the line for actually have gone for the creatures this game, but uh If we do that and he draws nothing if we firecraft he goes on to four Listen no, there's no there's no reason to do that. Damn it, this is a weird hand. Okay, so there are options. We bedlam revel, we'd have to discard a hand, but our hand is actually pretty decent, apart from the lack of lands. And uh Bedlam Revel is a good blocker on this board, and then we maybe we could Bedlam Revel. Fever Visions is kind of no right now. Uh, he would draw. I'd essentially do nothing this turn, apart from keep up Lightning Axe, and then I don't think I'm getting any further ahead in the game. That leaves us Lightning Axe, Killer's Chief, and then I'm almost. Thinking the player might might be fiery temper's face. I mean, if we had a third red, this turn would be a lot easier. We just kill both his creatures, but we don't. We're not of time as well, so we have to think fast. I think Bedlam Reveler is the play. I don't know. I'm almost tempted to just firecraft and hope to top deck the second firecraft. As cheesy as that sounds, but I think it's either Bedlam Reveler or firecraft, and 
My instincts say Bedlam Revel. Even though our hand is absolutely amazing, I know it sucks, but we have to do it. Uh, I guess that worked out okay in the end. We get to shock. Depending on what is. I mean, we get to shock down to six and then fiery temper. Three. So if we draw another burn spell. Do we shock end step in case we draw another burn spell? Because we can't do both on one turn now. Although he might not be able to attack. Because, like, if we. I don't know what this is. Why can't I just have quick, easy games where no one has to think instead of have to have these long, exciting, intense battles? Where. <laughs> I think it's benefit to him to wait. So the question is, do I wait? I think I do wait. 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 Okay, do a land. So now we don't have to wait <laughs> anymore. Uh, in this, so he's down to five, six, three. He's on three life, so one more burn spell, or if we can connect with his Bedlam Revel, which is not going to happen realistically, but... And we have a couple burn spells in case uh, Scorched Earth, so how many artifacts? One, two, three, four. So we can shock in response. We can shock in response, and then our creature stays alive. That's what we want to kill, I guess we kill a Thopter, so, or we go face. You know, I don't think this game's getting any better for us, I think we have to hope we top deck into burn. So I think we just go shock face. Fiery Temper face, then we have to chump, and then we have to hope to draw into a burn spell, because I don't think we're winning this late game, now, because if we shock a creature we're not winning, I think we just have to go for it. I don't think, I mean, it, uh, this game ends within one turn, we draw the burn spell or we don't. It has to be Collective Defiance of Second Fiery Temper, or another fi um, Fiery Temper Collective Defiance of Firecraft, but we have to chump here, so... We're dead within the next couple of turns anyway, I think. I think this is right. We Obviously, we block the Ruined Servitor. And then we hope to draw. That's it. Simple as. If he doesn't attack, then... I guess that works as well, because these Pokemon's... Okay, he's attacking. Ooh, that thing has haste, but no. This is it. Hit me. Off the top. Come on. Two chances at it. He gets to draw a card as well, but he's gonna get he gets to draw much of cards actually. But we go down to one. Storm Chase Mage plus Shock would do it as well. Uh, this is it. Moment of truth. Land of the oh! <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, what's the Lightning Helix? <laughs> I'm okay, that was sick. <laughs> okay. Is it burns good? I'll I'll accept that. Easy peasy, god damn squeezy, and uh, <laughs> our streak is undefeated. Nothing can stop us. In become in before the eagle comments. I don't care. And uh, rank thirteen, so we're getting there. We're seven, seven win, six wins actually off our coveted. Because uh, we a couple of seasons, I can't remember which one it was. I'm assuming it's either Shadows of Innistrad or Eldritch Moon. I managed to get to I think it was twenty or nineteen without losing. But I didn't do it all on the I didn't do it all on camera. We're now thirteen and we've done it all on camera. And there's been some good games in there. There's also been some terrible ones. So yeah, that is Is It Burn. Uh overall I will go back to our original discussion, which was whether I think it's better than more controlly or not. I didn't mean to duplicate. Uh whether it's better than a more controlly build and the answer is you tell me because uh I don't know. Uh, I think it's good. I think it is good. And it did obviously did work for me pretty well there and I think uh, I, I like the I like the all-in version. I think I, I do think it is uh, served me well. And I think it's doing okay. The question is, is Baral worth it? And that is an another question altogether. But uh, that is a discussion for another day. I'd like to say thank you guys for watching, and I will see you later.